Okay, it says nine individuals participated in a taste test with two different products. Uh, sample shows six preferred brand A, one brand B, and two were unable to state a preference. So it says with an alpha of 0 0.05, test for a significant difference in the preferences of two brands. Hopefully you've kind of looked over in, in your textbook on um, non-parametric methods. These are wonderful because everything you pretty much have done so far says your data comes from a normal distribution. Um, typically we've been doing quantitative data. And in this, these are distribution free. Now, if you go through like some examples of, of testing something like this, they use what's called the sign test. But the sign test is where you state differences based on the median. Okay, might be one thing that you're doing where you say that uh, the median sales are $300 and then you check based on your observed data, if you're above or below that halfway point. Okay, well, we have no data here. So what we have to go by is our sample here says six preferred brand A. Those are going to be our positive. Okay, so it said what, nine total. And our number of plus signs, our positives, okay, I guess I can put a plus there, is going to be six. Now, if you think about it, they either preferred brand A or they didn't, and that's why we can use a binomial. Okay, so um, here looking at two, we're, are, we're unable to state the actual preferences. We're not even going to count them. So my sample size becomes seven. So if there was no difference, if you were doing the sign test, or in this case, they were unable to state a difference, a preference in the two brands, they're dumped. You don't count them. So I'm only counting the six preferred as my positives, and then the one preferred brand B gives me my sample size. So what you do from here is you set up your everyday luxury, you set up your binomial probabilities, and in this case, you're going to be going to seven, right? And from maybe, you remember, way, way back in stats one, you can find a binomial distribution probability, okay? So, but if you look at this, this is all based off of the number of successes, I have that, um, the number of trials, that's my sample size, but what's my probability of success? Well, if we're testing half prefers one over another, then my null and alternative hypothesis, my null would be that the probability they prefer uh, brand A would equal 0.5. The alternative, and let me just, in fact, I got, I got it right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, so you can actually see it. So if I let P be the probability of a preference for brand A, then this is what my hypothesis would look like. Okay, so that's where I'm getting the 0 0.5, meaning that if we reject the null, then they prefer um, another brand more. So now I have everything that I need for my binomial. Once again, why are we using a binomial? Because they either preferred or not. That's the plus or minus, the two outcomes. Uh, my number of successes, my number of trials, which will always be in that cell, so absolute reference it. My probability of success, in this case for my null. And I don't want these to accumulate. I want to look at each individual probability. And so now I can just drag that straight down. What's one thing you should always do? Remember, make sure your distribution adds to one. Yeah, looking good there. All right. So how we would test this then is if we have six, okay, plus signs, then what we're actually testing is the probability that there would be six or more. And what I would do is add those two probabilities, 
Okay, and it's based on this data set being six plus signs. And I get this number. Now, these tests are two-tailed tests. So you have to be careful. Remember when you have a two-tailed test, you multiply the probability by two. Okay, so this actually would be my two-tailed two-tailed p-value. And what am I testing against? It looks like an alpha of 0 0.05. The p-value is greater. Okay, let's just put it here. The p-value is certainly greater than my alpha. Okay, so I will not reject the null. So what this means, there is no indication that there really um, is a difference in preference. So what, would, what we would do from here is we would like to probably go get a larger sample if we really think there is a, a difference in preference.